Hello and welcome to another edition of ICON. Today on the hot seat, I have a former boss, a veteran in the industry, someone who has contributed immensely to the growth of the broadcast industry in Nigeria. He is a, a doctor, a professor, and a former director general of the regulatory body of broadcasting, that, that's NBC. Who is my guest on this edition of the program? Well, all you need to do is just, we'll take a break and when we come back, you'll meet our guest on today's edition of ICON. So, stay with us. Welcome back. The program is ICON and today on the program we have Dr. Tom Adaba, OOM, a pioneer director general of the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC. From 1992 to 1999, a veteran in the industry and uh, someone who has given it all to the broadcast medium in Nigeria and he is the chairman of Trim Communication Limited. Dr. Tom Adaba, OON, welcome to ICON. Thank you very much. Nice to have you on the program, sir. Thank you. Now, let's start. How, how, why did you decide to go into broadcasting? Do, what was your motivation? Um, I started off as a teacher, primary mm -hmm. school teacher. A secondary school teacher and then later a university lecturer. Mm -hmm. But um, even in the, in the process, my initial intention was to be was to be in the in the military. But um, for one reason or the other I just couldn't get, get into it. And um, when I went now for my advanced course in teaching, that's the um, the, the National Certificate in Education course. Um, I went to the Advanced Teachers College in Kano. That school was a, a gift of the American government to the Northern Nigeria government. Inside that school there was a, a broadcast studio, a TV broadcast studio. I didn't even know about this until, I, until in my second year out of, of the three year course that I was doing. Um, I was interested in broadcasting. I said, if I, if I fail the military, the next will be to take on broadcasting apart from teaching. Um, how on earth I would get into it was, was definitely the difficulty because in the then north, there was only one t 
television station, which was owned by the then Northern Nigeria government. And um, the demand, of course, was very high. So um, I wasn't too sure I would ever have, have, have my way through there. But for one reason or the other, I happened to have been uh, the uh, uh, director of socials in, our, in, in, the, in the school. And um, we organized a very big um, welcome party for the Americans who were coming and the set of parts sent forth for the, those who were going. And we merged it all onto our end of year party. And we had a lot of activities, cultural activities, and many of them who came, the Americans who came, were so excited about it that they went and told the others. And um, when they got, they had this, you know, the following day, the, um, the chief of party invited me to the office. I went and he said, um, he congratulated me for the, the job that was said to have been very well done. He apologized as well. He couldn't be there. And he now asked, do you think this can be uh, recorded on television? I said, yes, it can. We can replicate it. We can easily call all the artists in and then get them all recorded. So, if that's the case, okay, can you go on to, to the, the TV station um, and ask for one Mr. Kent Clark? So I went in there. Uh, I, I, I asked for him and the man said, what can we do for you? Then, you know, I said, well, so I was directed by the, the chief of party to the place and he now engaged me in a very long conversation. And before anything, anything could actually happen, he told me, well, I've been planning to have a student's program on mm -hmm. TV, mm -hmm. and I'm afraid you have to be the anchor person. Wow. I said, well, I, Just I've, like never, that? I've never done it before, so I don't know. He said, well, I believe you can do it himself. So I said, go and think about what, what the program is going to be like, what mm -hmm. the format is going to be like. And I immediately told him that there was going to be a student's election because this was on a, on, a, on a Monday, I said there will be a student's election on Friday. And um, I said it would be a good idea if we can get the students in, the, the students who are contesting elections to in, to, to come and, you know, sell themselves. Sell themselves. And he said, well, the time factor is what I, what I worry about. And I said, I don't think we need to worry too much about that. We'll try and see how it can be done. He said, okay, I leave it to you. So I went back to, the, the, I went on to the notice board, first put something on there, invited all the contestants. The following morning, the place was all full. Like so, for a debate? Yes, not for a debate, for them to, 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 to sell, sell themselves. themselves. Yes, we gave them two, two minutes each. Okay. We gave them the format and then told them, you know, they can go home and then get themselves back on Thursday. I mean, on, on Wednesday. They came in on that Wednesday. Everybody took his turn and uh, things seemed to have flowed so beautifully. At the end of it, you know, Mr. Clark came and carried me up and said, mm -hmm. you did a fantastic job. For how long have you been practicing this? I said, I've never done it. I've never handled a microphone in my life. Natural. He said, impossible. He just was taking it over. He, he went places. So, um, and like play, like play, before I could finish my MC, I already he had a, face there. a scholarship oh, waiting wow. for me to go to the U.S to read Moscow. And you know, that was just how. So I, con I now continued the students' program until the time when I was, when I was to leave for, for the US, wow. in oh, okay. And I was given three years to do the, the, the first degree in Moscow, but by the grace of God, I was able to do it in one year, 10 months. Mm. And uh, I came back home. So um, that's how I got into Brooklyn. And that was how the journey started. Wow, a great story. Well, sir, broadcasting in Nigeria has indeed come a long way. What's your take on the journey so far? Well, I want to believe that we have been taking our steps one, 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 one at a time. And uh, I wouldn't say we're doing badly. But unfortunately, the world is not waiting for us. The world is moving. And we are trying now to meet up you know, the demands of the world. Um, digitization, for example, is one aspect that has come in. And we're now trying to fit into it. But before now, you and I know, know very well that the, the history of um, broadcasting in Nigeria, especially television broadcasting in Nigeria, is more or less the history of Nigerian politics. Um, when, when the first broadcast station came up in 1959, um, all the other, the other regions, because this was coming from the Western, Western region, the other regions immediately made, made um, attempts to get set up their own. By 1960, 
the Eastern Region already had its, its own ENBC or ENBS. And um, 1961, 62, um, the national, that's the one in Lagos, mm -hmm. and then, you know, um, um, the, then the one in Kaduna. Mm -hmm. Um, by 62, that one was also was ready. So those were the only states, that, the, the only regions that were available at that time. So it now had... It was regional there. Yes. Then by 1966, states, uh, 67, states were created. No, six, yes. States were created in 66. And then, you know, um, all the states that were created also wanted to have their television stations. And they began to develop those. And so the demand continued to increase with the, with the number of states that were, were available. Um, a lot of politics went into it. During this period, anyway, um, it was a military regime, mm -hmm. so there wasn't too much of politics. But when politics came in, in 1969, um, uh, states that felt they were not comfortable with the central, um, the central portion of the country that, that had the political um, majority, you know, they now had decided to set up their own because they were minorities at the end and they feared that they would not be sufficiently covered by the federal. So those TV stations came up again. And meanwhile, there was only one major station, that was the NTA. NTA was, a, it was an amalgam of all those earlier stations, mm. now put together by decree. Decree 19, uh, 1977, uh, retroactive 1976. Now, they, they, they all were merged into one, uh, WNBS, WNTV, EMB, all of them. And um, it was also in preparation more or less for... Um, uh, not not uh, for the for first tax seventy seven, okay. you know, and it, it all came. In fact, they, they, they did that after it, but it all came and it, it was a success story. So they, they, there was only one um, frame of television station in the in the in, in the country network in the country, but after um, civilians came in. Those political parties that felt they were not in line with the centre, you know, decided to have their own. So there was an increase. There was an increase in the in number of stations that came up. And um, the, that increase created a problem for NTA. Because all the experienced staff were in NTA. And of course, so these, they were now poached. these new stations <laughs> needed to poach stuff from the, 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 the only station that was available. So they had to, they had to make themselves available. I mean, they, they, of course, they were, the, the staff, the new staff that were being recruited were, were enticed by like more money. Exactly. So um, NTA was fast losing staff and was also recruiting. But a good thing came. That NTA felt that no matter what, the poaching will continue as long as there are more stations. Mm. And said the best thing is to set up a training school for the staff so that there will be no, 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 no loss, you know, mm. that will be markedly felt. And that was precisely why the TV college, uh, the mm. NTA Television College, came up in 1980. And I was privileged to, to be the first the pioneer, um, pioneer principal. principal of the TV College, where you came. Yes. yes. <laughs> and, um, you know, many, many courses were run, people were now getting more and more professionalized and so on and so forth. You know, it helped a great deal. And um, certainly after, after all those, you know, many more stations came up. And of course, when in 1992, um, the, the, the floodgate was open for private private um, broadcast stations so. to come in. You saw what it was. Mm. You know, it was a very very stressing demand on on broadcast stations. You know, in terms of staffing and so on and so forth. But that the coming in of of um, the private the broadcasting was a blessing onto broadcasting in this country. Mm. The face of broadcasting has Changed. never been the same again. Never. Mm. And you know it. While you were talking, you mentioned digitization. Now, uh, why can't Nigeria get it right? We have postponed um, 
digitization twice and uh, that's already what what do you think how can we really walk the talk that's one aspect and then secondly um the industry has lost some of its professionalism so what's your take on this well um walking the talk i think we're just beginning to get into it i think there was a, a you know we were we're talking at cross purposes you know um I, when when we talked about about digitalization, it's not it's not it's not meant it's not a creation of of, of, of Nigeria. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's an ITU creation, and we were we were bound to abide by it. Um, unfortunately, the timeline given to us, we were not able to fulfill it. We were not able to carry it out, you know, because of one one um, challenge or the other. Let me put it very mildly. Um, when 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 we were given the impression that it was going to start, we we're going to work on on the timing given to yeah, us. Yeah, June twelfth. Yeah, we will we will um, we'll beat the deadline. You know, I was I was really ex excited about it, but unfortunately, the political will to pull out the funds to take care of it never came, and um, the I'm not I'm not even too sure we. We're also very well prepared for oh, for that change. because digitization um, calls for a thorough knowledge of mm. what we are going into, and that knowledge is not just for the practitioners alone, but, for the but even for the viewing public. Um, even for the practitioners, we were not really prepared at all. Even the, 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 in terms of engineering, which seemed to have been an area that was focused more on, and I think that was really a, a very costly mistake. Um, the uh, the content content is the key thing for any such sort of things. If you if you say you are in the name of digitization, you, uh, you the one channel that you were using before can now be compressed onto 24, 26, 28, or whatever. Mm, something to what are you going to put in all those channels? Or 28 channels, and then you run 24 hours a day for seven, seven days a week? It's, it's impossible. Because even right now, the single channel that we're using, we're not even too sure we're really um, proficient and competent in in our use of timing and programming. So that is an area that needs to be stressed very seriously. I'm not sure um, it has really been quite manifest yet, even up to now. But I'm believing that this new date will be met. It may be met partially, and then maybe you know, continue to grow into it. But um, it's, a, it's a very, it's a sad thing that um, we allowed that to pass us by because of our, our non-seriousness over the issue, or lack of, maybe lack of understanding of, the, of, the, of what the issue was. Even now, people don't really understand what digitization is all about. You're Even right. some, some of the professionals in the industry, You're right. they don't. And this is the more reason why they need a lot no of... No sensitization, yes, no publicity. A lot of these, a lot of sensitization, a lot of publicity. And that is what we are still lacking. I want to hope and believe that we'll be able to get, get, get a bit of those out. You talked about content, or well, the kind of content we see now on TV. Should it really be what to so? We see all sorts of things, all sorts of substandard productions. Yes, because we want to cut the cut corners. They can speed. If we are serious about it, I expected that by now there should have been a lot of um, syndicates, mm -hmm. you know, all out doing one form of production mm -hmm. or the other, which can be harnessed, and then you know the, the stations made to pay for it. Um, but that is not coming. Stations don't want to pay. Well, they, they expect to. They expect you, the producer, to bring a program and pay them no. for showing it. Um, sorry, I, I, I don't think I don't think it necessarily follows though, because um, if 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 we're working on on 
um, a consensus, a digitized situation mm -hmm. where you are into one network or the other. Whether you like it or not, you have to pay the network for, for being in it. And if you want to remain on your own and be you know, a small um, island onto mm -hmm. yourself, um, you're heading for crumbling. You're heading for total destruction because you, you are going to the same market as all the others are going. And the number of people that you have watching your programs mm -hmm. will determine whether you can get commercials or not. So it is an, it is an issue that must be taken care of. You know, it's, um, I don't think any station will want to say we're not paying. It's not easy. Baby, all right, we used to have um, a body conducting like a research yes. on how how popular your station is. Yes. Yeah, because I remember in Lagos, NTA Channel 10 won the best TV station three times in a row. So do we still have such um, such people? I honestly don't know. Uh, I believe that um, the regulatory body like, I mean, which is the NBC, the NBC. should have a fair idea about it, you know. I, and I, I know that it's, it's extremely helpful to mm -hmm. stations yes. who subscribe to it. Perhaps it is still on, and if it is not on, it, it might be due to lack of subscription. Well, that brings to mind another question of research and um, viewership. For the 10th year running, Channel TV is, has been adjudged the best TV station in Nigeria. Yes. NTA, NTA that um, paved the way for broadcasting yes. in Nigeria, yes. not even once. What do you think NTA is doing wrong that has not put it on that kind of platform that channels this? Okay. Um, Sincerely now, you know. Channels. The headship of channels is a product of NTA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. Ab uh, tells us therefore that he's a professional and he's determined to be a professional. He decided to do the, the peace programs in a professional way. He has not said he's going to go into all sorts of all you know his programming is going to go into all sorts of areas. No, he limits himself to be and he seeks excellence in that news. And um, that to me is what is paying off for him. NTA has not zeroed its focus to anything particular yet. On what they want to be known for. Exactly. News, yes. Uh, if they add a little bit of verb and pep to it, yes. Uh, it will come out very well because one NTA has the reach. The, the 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 productions that come out of channels, you will agree, are extra, are very very professional. I mean, it's not a matter of they winning the the the, 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 the award this number of times. Mm -hmm. See how many how we many are doing something good. Now. See how many outside outside organizations associate with them. Even international mm -hmm. governments associate with them. So they see something that is good, that is internationally acceptable in what they're doing. And it is not the, the, the large nature that matters now. In fact, ever since the deregulation of broadcasting, NTA has had the challenges. Um, NTA never thought of of 24 hours a day programming. But NTA was forced into it by the private broadcasters. And those are all factors that NTA now must look inwards and ask what is it that can actually project us. If NTA, for example, decides we'll go cultural, we'll take on you know various festivals, musicals, dances, and all, you know, all of the things. That is in itself a very, very strong
strong element of entertainment. It is not to say that they will not take news, they will not take this or take that, but they are known for it. NDA says, oh, um, okay, our educational uh, department will have to um, come up with a lot of children's programs. You know, the youngsters and the children will now flock onto that place. Um, NTA has got to zero in on one or two things and then excel in it, concentrate on it, and uh, it will come back. As a former staff sir, and a director, um, have you have you also made this known oh, to management of yes. NTA? Even of recent. Even of recent. And we're working on something now. You know, mine is more in terms of training, but all these other areas, you know, we leave, leave to, um, to the authorities to handle. Take documentaries. NTA is coming up with very solid documentaries. That, you know, and if, if NTA can, can, can hold on to that and push it hard, get more out. And I mean, I'm not talking of anything wishy-washy. I'm talking of things that are not just factual but extremely entertaining, very refreshing, educative, and so on and so forth. You know, NTU will make miles of inroads into, into um, a, a being, a, into acceptability. Okay. And, uh, has this government done well in its... Um, in the, in the circumstances that found itself, I want to believe it is, it is, it is still battling. Mm -hmm. is, and is battling gallantly, I want to believe. Why have I said this? And fortunately, the president himself has said it, that um, um, corruption is fight, fighting back. Then, and that is the truth. Talking about corruption, in one of the interviews you did recently, you opined that um, government cannot get the areas of corruption right without stepping on stones. Can you elaborate? Well, you see, it's the truth. If you don't step on tools, you cannot move, you're not moving. And if you have to, if you do that, you have to be guided by the Constitution. So it, that in itself becomes a problem. Uh, people believe it's uh, biased, the tools stepping, you know, that government is uh, picking the people, the one to probe or send EFCC after. Have those people committed any of them? If they have, there's no bias in it. If they have, if they are the thieves, are you expecting the government to come and arrest me? For what? If, if, the, if the people are the ones who have collected the money and have put us where we are today, mm -hmm. they deserve to be proved. And deserve to Even be jailed if, if they need a right. Some of them are in your own family too. So what? Yeah, but they have not touched some of those ones in the... You know, in a you know, family. You know <laughs> Do you, you know, know them? We all know them. Now. No, I don't. <laughs> Do you know them? Because um, as far as I'm concerned, it's the thief that, is, that, that remains the thief. <laughs> oh, no, seriously. Um, how do you... Why hasn't the government come to arrest me? Let them come and arrest me and see if they can get a come out of me. But, you know, I, it, is, it is not... It, we are so much in a hurry in this country. Oh God, we are. Nothing ever works with us. And that's why we're not moving. This man said, he is coming in. He has a mission to wipe out corruption, or at least reduce it to a minimum. Wiping out, wiping out corruption is equally a possible recession, don't you think? No, not that I know. Is it, oh, those, those thieves are the ones who have been giving us money, right? Putting the money in the government. Is that right? I'm asking you, sir. No, 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 I'm <laughs> asking you, you know, because I don't know what, how, how, how we can link it up with, with, um, with um, recession. But you believe that there's hardship in the land? Of course there is. Okay. There is. And we all know why. Why? Why? You were selling your petrol, your oil for a hundred dollars before. You were selling for thirty now. That's why. You were producing uh, at um, two thousand barrels a day 
or more. Today you're producing at what? Yes. A thousand plus. That's why. And you are producing at a thousand plus because the people in, in the Niger Delta area are destroying the, the pipelines. That's why. And the, the, the president himself had to make it clear to us that he met nothing in the, in the coffers. That there was nothing saved. And these are the worst of our, of our Naira is determined by what we have you know, outside that can at least back it up. If there is nothing, what are we to use? What's the way out of recession? I'm not an economist. Why, why are you asking me? Well, as far as I'm concerned, opinion. as far as I'm concerned, um, I know the, the, the economic element of it is being taken care of by the economists. But one great thing that is happening right now is in the area of agriculture. So focus should now be on agriculture. Well, it's, it is, or it's already on agriculture. Where people are complaining, they say rice is, um, is it's something rubbish. I say, aren't nonsense. Those who want to eat imported rice are the ones who complain about that. If you want to eat local, locally produced rice, you'll get it at 8,000 8, anywhere. Today, go to Sahad or any of these places. You will get it at 8,000. But if you say you think you are sophisticated enough and you want to eat all the expired rice that comes from Thailand, which is rebarbed and brought into this country for us to consume. I, I saw in the papers yesterday that the, the customs impounded a, a, a cheap load of 591,000 tons of rice coming into yeah. this country. Tons of rice coming into this country. This is what we were meant to consume. Our own, they are there in, um, in, in mm -hmm. where is that place in the, in the, in the east? Abakaliki. Abakaliki. There are rices, our father is there. Sokoto is there. Um, Bigda is there. They are, they are all converging. They are, they are giving you rice. Rice, fresh rice. Not, not expired rice. Fresh rice that is healthy for you and me. Shouldn't government um, create a bank for this rice to be brought into? There are silos. There are silos everywhere. Uh -huh. There are silos where they, you know, they, they put them you know, for the... the, the, the um, the dry season. There are silos. Are the silos uh, enough? Well, I don't know. But I know that there are some. And um, they, they contain quite a lot. Quite a lot. Well, so, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, if you are after those foreign things, you can complain that it's expensive. Did you hear again today that there's a whole um, what do they call, call it? The, 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 it's not a ship load now, but a container load of already prepared Nigerian dishes coming from in India. Already prepared Nigerian Obono dishes? Obono included. Jollof rice included. Coming from India, being imported into this country. By Nigerians? Who else? I don't know who else could do that. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, it's, it's just. You can see the, the, the extent to which we go. If you have one and don't know what to do with it, please, Lord, please give to people who are in, in their need. Establish. So even if we're having these instances and we're still complaining, where do we go? As far as I'm concerned, you know, um, there will be less noise about food, the price of food, as we go along. Because as the harvest comes, the only other thing that I want to advise government to, to watch out for is that there are so many countries outside, you know, um, um, neighboring countries, that come in and collect our rice. In the Sokoto mm -hmm. area, in, the, in, one of the, in one of these northern, northern states. In fact, there's a whole market there. They come from Cameroon, they come from, um, um, from Niger, from... Um, to buy Chad. our rice? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. 
Mm. And they, 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 they're doing that. I mean, we've seen the photographs of them and what have, you know, uh, news coverage of them. So if we, if we don't limit ourselves as to what we can give out, well, we may create another problem for ourselves later. But um, as for production of rice, we are producing. We will pause and take a break. When we come back, we'll continue with the conversation with Dr. Tom Adaba, OOM. So stay with us. Hello and welcome to another edition of My Space. My name is Maxwell Loco, Managing Director, NTA TV Enterprises. Watch My Space on ABN TV channel 15.9 history. I am a Nigerian. I am one in five Africans. I am a Nobel Prize winner, a soccer champion, a giant of literature, a musical icon. My roots lie in the dusty Sahel of the north, in the rich rainforests of the east, in the savannah plains of the west, and in the oil-filled swamps of the Delta. My strength flows from the waters of the Niger and the Benue. Nigeria is my home. I am the voice of 200 tribes speaking more than 200 languages. I am the laughter of the world's happiest people. I am my brother's keeper. I am a child in one of the youngest nations on earth. I am the passion. I am the soul of a continent. I am a Nigerian. Welcome back to the program and it's still Icon. Guest on today's edition is my former boss, a veteran in every sense of the word, an icon who has contributed immense, immensely to the broadcast industry in Nigeria, Dr. Tom Adaba, OON. And by the way, former, the pioneer DG, NBC, the first principal of Nigerian Television Authority TV College, NTTVC. Okay, so enough of politics. Now let's talk about you. Uh, I read somewhere, saw somewhere that out of six of your children, four are into broadcasting. Yes, sir. Were they coerced, or what informs they are going into? They saw what you did. I know nothing <laughs> about how they did. Absolutely nothing. In fact, the, the funniest of all is. Um, our last daughter, who went to ABU and read vet medicine wow. and collected awards when he was when she was graduating in vet medicine. Today she's a broadcaster. She is with a ninety-five point what? If you hear of Inya Kode, okay. she is the one. Wow. Um, he's, he's a vet doctor. <laughs> that's what that's, she that's her passion. And I said, why did you waste all my, my money? money? You would have told me why to go there and take you to mass communications. And you would do it for less years. <laughs> and less years. But why would you do this, uh, Dad? Um, vet medicine is my profession. Mm -hmm. this, this is my passion. My passion. Good. That's what you win. Okay. So all the others, starting from our very eldest daughter, Margaret, she started off you know, mm. with um, Menage, mm. and then but she's now with the United Nations, you know, mm -hmm. uh, communications, whatever. Um, Oiza, Oiza was with um, AIT and with um, a few of these uh, foreign broadcast stations and, and also multi choice. <laughs> And um, she she's you know handling some documentaries mm -hmm. now. based in Lagos. She commutes between U.S. and, mm -hmm. and Nigeria. And um, well, so let me see. Let me see that our first son is um, a manager in um, in 
cool effect. Mm -hmm. He was a pioneer staff of um, NM24. Mm -hmm. And um, he decided therefore to, to go, go to radio instead of. So, there they are. Who else? <laughs> so, they are, they are scattered everywhere, but I, I never for one day said Thank a word to any of them mm -hmm. at all. One who is a banker was talking of going back in, going into broadcast yeah. house. I said, are you cost? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, the ones who are there, what are they getting? I, who did it, what did I get? Really, what do you think about the remuneration for broadcasting? Broadcasters, especially in the government like NTA. Well, um, <sighs> I don't know what it is like now, so I wouldn't know what to say about it. But I want to believe that there's no remuneration given to broadcasters or given to you know journalists that is, is too much. Mm -hmm. Because one, they face a lot of risks, and two, they have a lot to offer to the society mm -hmm. in terms of knowledge, mm -hmm. education, entertainment, mm -hmm. and you name it. How would you rate a movie industry in Hollywood? Well, I've been told that it's uh, number two world, worldwide. I think there was a time when there was this terrible emphasis on fetishism. And I think it is not the best for us. Uh, I'm not saying that you know some of our people are not fetish, but not all our people are fetish. But when you do that, you know, you give an impression and that we are fetish that's what all people. of us are. Um, I remember, you know, uh, uh, so there was a conference, a workshop sometime, a United Nations workshop, not too long ago, I think about three years ago, in Nairobi, Kenya, and um, the, the Nigeria was represented. There was this lady that came from Zambia, and she was told that she would be in the syndicate where the Nigerian was. She said, no, said, never. Wow. Why? They had to ask why, and she said, uh, "I don't, I don't want them to to hypnotize me or send me to whatever." To the, what she had been and she was serious. Yes, she was. She because she assumed that every Nigerian was oh, Jujuma. <laughs> you know. Wow. But I don't think that makes a, a good impact on us as a people. But I think they are beginning to reduce it. I, I think there are quite a number of other areas, creative areas that you can think of and mm -hmm. come up with something really good that spells uh, a good name for Nigeria. You know, we, we, I'm not saying that, yes, this fetish thing is not our eyes. But e even then, I had all along insisted that if you say, um, yes, there is this the, the fetish thing, um, at the end of it all, prove, they, they let the world see that it, it doesn't reign supreme. Mm -hmm. The supremacy and of it, God it, still it, remains yeah. the same. It the doesn't world. always work. It doesn't. Are yeah. we still, do we still have any relationship with Otna? Um, I, I honestly don't know. Otna died for a while, but I think it's been revived now. Mm -hmm. So I think um, if we're able to, in fact, that, that's one of the things I advocated for in, in, the, in the recent Africast, Africast that was held here. That we should, we should um, start off a very serious Extreme. broadcast market. Mm -hmm. Broadcast market on an annual basis. basis. Let it alternate with Africast. Africast will see um, a and so mm -hmm. on. Let this alternate with the content. Yes. Let's just concentrate on content. Mm -hmm. Let people bring their wares in. Then you know people can exchange. Mm -hmm. They can buy. They can, Network. You know, um, and we'll be the richer for it. Mm -hmm. We cannot produce everything that we, we want. Mm -hmm. we, neither can we buy everything that we want. There are even some that can go for exchange. Mm -hmm. For the others, that. So it's a multi uh, arrangement. That, yes. How do you relax, sir? I used to I used to play tennis, and I was going into golf, you know. Uh, but unfortunately, um, I had a spinal surgery, mm -hmm. a series of spinal surgeries that have really um, limited your limited my, my ac yes. activity. I was a more more uh, a sedentary person now. Mm -hmm. um, but to God be glory that I am still alive and I'm even able to walk after five surgeries on my spine. Right. Uh, I, I think it's mm -hmm. God's miracle. 
So um, I, 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 I do some walking now and relax and watch TV. What are your likes? Food? What kind of music do you listen to? Your favorite food? Your favorite TV food. program? News. 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 Documentaries. So you're a programs person. News, documentaries. <laughs> documentaries. And when I, I know when I see a good one, I know it, you know. Um, and, um, what really yeah. makes a, a good documentary or a good program? Um, the interest of the people. Is it reflected? A drama, for example, that people can relate with. Be assured it will be very popular. That's relevance. Okay. If it is relevant, then um, you're on the move. So it is with drama, with documentaries, and so on and so forth. Think there are things that you can identify with. Um, there was a time I did a research work on one foreign program vis-a-vis -vis one of these um, programs produced by Peter Hill, um Behind the Clouds. Mm -hmm. And you will be surprised. The people I interviewed in, in Jaws, in Nevada, in Lagos, in Kaduna, the preponderance of re response I got was very much in favor of the Nigerian program. And I now asked, how do you now reconcile your, um, this 500 club? Tell us uh, about your favorite things, colors, food, um, music, Colors. I think blue. Light blue is light blue. Um, milk. Um, beige. Beige. Off white. Um, <laughs> yes, off white. Um, those are the colors I use. I use very, very frequently. Mm -hmm. Blue is, is, is a favorite color of mine. And um, meals. Mm -hmm. uh, meals. I, I eat twice a day. I eat a brunch yeah. and I eat so dinner. Okay. Now, when I finish my brunch, um, which could be anything from moi moi and akamo or whatever, you know, those things, um, I'm set for the rest of the day. Okay. And in the evening, um, I, people think that I should eat something solid, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I eat anything, the um, the wheat. Wheat? We understand wheat is not good for the health. Well, I've just, I've just heard of that again now, mm. I don't know, I don't know <laughs> what it's what. And, um, but you know, of recent I've added... Uh, vegetables? Well, a lot of vegetables, and then, you know, um, Angidi, what do they call it? Echo. Echo. Uh -huh. Right, um, that's my supper. So. Um, but on Sundays, they know that lunch is pounded yam. Yeah. Yeah. It's pounded yam. Yeah. Let that be. <laughs> and everybody's interested. And um, but all the ordinary, you know, and for the eat in the evening, jollof rice or something. Okay. So, what kind of music do you listen to? A lot of a lot of gospel music. A lot of um, spiritual, spiritually awakening music, mm -hmm. um, but that's not to say I don't listen to others. You know, um, secular music. Again, if the music is good, but uh, music. Who is your favorite my, my secular artist? Anybody who is a good saxophonist. Mm -hmm. um, what? So what's that, that guy's name? He's great. He's a best in. in in Lagos. Oh, God. Sonny No, the no. saxophonist is a saxophonist. You know, um, those ones, yes, I, I go for them many times, many times. You know, mm -hmm. clarinet, saxophone, um, flutes, yeah, instrumentals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instrumentals. instrumentals. Okay. I'm, I'm, I go for them a great deal. What would you like to be remembered for? And if you have an opportunity of writing your own epitaph, what will it be? Giving service. 
to God and to people. Mm -hmm. If I if I have succeeded in doing this, I'm fulfilled. Before we go, sir, last word, your last word to um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, Nigeria hasn't come there yet. I just pray. You know, we're not too much in a hurry to a point that would break our necks. Um, if only we can adopt some um, mature, um, slow, steady approach to our affairs in this country and a clear understanding among one another for a better society, then we will all have it together. I would also want to um, say the government should make more provision for listening to people. Um, the issue of, of uh, Niger Delta should be looked at very dispassionately. Um, the the um, 2014 national conference should be looked at. There's a lot that could be gotten out of it and it will be for the good of this country. So that we will not be seen as um, factionalized and having segmented ourselves in different directions. Let the government listen to the preponderance of opinions that would help this country grow. Mm -hmm. It's only through that that we can weave ourselves together. And as I said, let's not throw away the 2014 National Conference. Okay. There are things that we can, if, if we have the political will, the sincerity, of purpose. the sincerity of purpose to make them work, they will be for the good of this country. And if, if all these um, um, agitations will be killed and killed. From it. How would you rate the performance of the National Assembly? Have they really, really? Unfortunately, they started on a on a, on a crisis crisis queue. Um, they're just getting themselves out of that now, and one sees that there is a, a desperate attempt now to focus on their mission. Um, if the arrest of the Senate President and all those things that happened have also um, excited them onto understanding that they also they own a responsibility to 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 um, to cleanse the nation, then if they are on that course, it is good for all of us. I say this because you know at least. There are certain areas that they have investigated and uh, found, you know, corruption really said there, here and there, and they themselves are probing them. If they do that and do that with all seriousness of purpose, I believe that they will succeed. Oh, I see. I'd like to say a very big thank you to you, sir, for giving me part of your time thank you. for the start. I, I, I enjoyed thoroughly being here with you. Thank you very much. All right. So I, I hope any t any other time we want to have you on, you will gladly as always Perfect. oblige us. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much, Uncle Tom. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you well, you the very best. Thank you, sir. Best. Well, that has been the interview with an icon, Dr. Tom Magaba, O O N. I hope you took away one or two things from the conversation. I certainly did. Now let's do this again next week at the same time. Until then, bye for now.